Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. And on this video tutorial, what I wanna do is I wanna just give you some ideas for what you can do with vintage buttons because, oh my gosh, I just am absolutely in love with them. I love the look that they give everything. And um, so let's start with that, okay. Uh, these are not the project for today, but these were a couple of pillows that I made for my couch over a year ago. They're sitting on my couch right now. This one was like a fall wreath that I did on one of these canvas pillows in gold and silver ink, and then I added those buttons. Aren't those pretty? And then this was... <sighs> Another design I did using the Retro Flower stencil from MagnoliaDIY.com in gold, and then I used the Sunflower in silver ink, and I added all these buttons. And um, it just, let me see if I can get it so you can see. These just look fabulous on my couch, and they're just two of my absolute favorite projects. So today, what I want to show you is how you can make a banner and add buttons to it. And um, yeah, so we're going to be working with some of this, which is just canvas uh, duck cloth. It's a thick canvas. I got this at Hobby Lobby maybe two weeks ago from their fabric department. This is the white <clears throat> piece. And this is more of the oatmeal piece. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's what our banners are going to start with. And um, then I'm going to give you some ideas for how you can make the top of them stiff. And this is one that I did in advance because you guys know I don't just sit down and start crafting with you guys. I figure everything out. <sighs> try to uh, get a bunch of additional ideas, tell you what to do, what not to do, all that business. Anyway, so this is the banner that I started yesterday after I got home from my Bible study and that I worked on last night and today. Isn't it pretty? It says bloom where you're planted. And then look at the little flowers. So this was just a piece of this oatmeal colored canvas. I stenciled it using this stencil, which is so adorable. I've used this on a ton of different projects. It says bloom where you're planted. And then it has this um, design of like wildflowers at the bottom with a couple of butterflies. And um, mine looks terrible because I've used it a lot because I, I like this stencil. It's a good one. So I used that and I used some of this ink right here from Magnolia that is called Gray Owl and a squeegee. I let it dry. Then after it was dry, I glued on my buttons. Then I added some of this lace on the top and the bottom, added a few little buttons in the corner, and I will get close up pictures. So I'm gonna show you how to do something like this, start to finish two different ways. All right, and let me just tell you. So, one of my Facebook followers named um, Joanne Waldrop, she sent me a box of goodies. Goody, goody, goodies. A whole bunch of beautiful fabric. And then she knows my love language, which is buttons. <laughs> so I wanna show you what she sent. And then we're gonna actually be, those buttons on that banner came from the little container that she sent. Okay, so I'm not gonna dig all the fabric out, but I do wanna show you the buttons. Look at these, oh my gosh. There's a ton of different red ones, which I just need to clean them up because they have a little, they're, they're vintage. And they've been, they were her mother's, I believe she told me. They've been, you know, hanging out and they have, they're a little bit, I don't know if that's mildew or, or what it is, but look at all these beautiful, red buttons and there were other designs too i'm super excited so that was part of it and i just wanted to show y'all uh, and then there was a package of black that had 
has oh, just a bunch of different designs. And there was some dark green in this package as well. And then there was this package of white. And then um, her little package to me, which was, oh my gosh, it was just perfect all around. Um, so Joanne, thank you. Um, it also included a bag of vintage wood uh, thread spools and some back when they used to make the bobbins for your sewing machine I think this is like a cardboard paper type of thing and then she sent me some different kinds of little oops, lacy things and then this big bag and like I said, she also sent me fabric and some of her crafts, which was super sweet. But for right now, what I, what I want to show you is the, um, the buttons, and then we're going to use them. So this was a bag that was almost all the way full of a variety of different things. And last night, I'm such a, I don't know if I'm just a big nerd or what, a homebody, but... Last night, I just sat in my comfy chair and I dug for over an hour through this bag of buttons and then I cleaned them because, you know, old buttons and I cut the fabric off of some of them. But look at this, you guys. Oh my goodness. And a ton of these are baby buttons. So they're really little. They're mostly all the ones that I pulled out anyways. Mother of Pearl. There's some that are carved. Um, oh, there were one or two bone ones in there too, which I love those as well. Um, and a couple like fun ones like this and um, some of these that have a little shank. So, anyways, uh, I just that pre that occupied about two hours of my time playing and looking through buttons and cleaning them up. and ah, So I was so excited to be able to craft with them. All right, now I showed you this project. If you're just hopping on, um, I'm gonna show you how to make some cute little banners using, um, this is canvas duck cloth from Hobby Lobby, but you can get it everywhere that sells fabric. Um, so the other thing I did before I went live I did this last night, so it could dry overnight, was I stenciled this. And we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to do, make this into a pretty little banner. Okay, and it's this stencil right here that says, Hello Spring. I used the same gray ink on this one, so we'll, we'll doll that up in just a second. But before we doll that up, here's a piece of the white, the whiter canvas. And we're gonna use that Hello Spring again, but we're gonna do it in bright colors. And then um, I'm gonna show you how you can add buttons to something like this as well. So I'm just taking my stencil off of the backing and it's still pretty darn sticky, but, um, how I want it. But there's no point fuzzing it on fabric if you're just going to lay it on fabric. I hope that makes sense. So let me get my ruler. I do want to just see if I'm about right. I don't know, sometimes I think measuring is a big mistake <laughs> because then you're insisting that it be perfect. Anyways, okay, so this is what I have. Oh my gosh, and this is such a cute stencil. Um, and it's not just limited to spring. So what I want you to think about is how you could use the word hello or the word spring separate or this beautiful wreath just by itself. 
and you can put something else inside of it. Okay, I don't think that looks exactly straight, but I'm going to go with it. So instead of using this gray ink, we're going to use this magnolia green, and then this one is called fuchsia rose. So it's going to be cute. I'm going to do the outside in the green, and I'm going to do the inside in the fuchsia rose. So let's get some of these. Squeegees. I want some of my paintbrush squeegees, which are these guys. Okay. Let me think. Let's do this little, these two little butterflies in green also, but then the hello in pink. And honestly, this would be a whole lot easier to do if I did it all one color. But I just want to show you guys a different idea, so. So I'm basically just laying my ink on top of the stencil and pushing it through. this little twirly do right here in pink because there's no way I'm gonna not get on it so I get questions all the time from people who think that stenciling is really hard and you guys I think the reason why people think it's going to be really hard is because it did used to be really hard um I remember using some of those thick hard plastic stencils in the 1980s with the brushes that you just went up and down and you had to tape them onto your project and the result was not very detailed and you know, if you didn't hold it completely still, you ended up with a big smudge. Um, so it was a lot more difficult back then. I need one of my paintbrush squeegees. But these don't shift around. They're so much easier. So, um, yeah, so if you're just remembering back to those days and thinking, ooh, that was not good. I don't even want to mess with it. Um, just know that these are adhesive and they're super detailed and they're so much easier to work with. When you're working with ink, you do want to, you know, work relatively speedily. This butterfly pink also. And we'll do everything else in green. The reason why you want to work relatively speedily is because you don't want the ink to dry um, fully in your holes of your mesh. Let me see if I can come down a little bit further. This part will be easy. I will use my paintbrush squeegee in a few spots. So we're going to stencil this one. It won't be dry enough that we can move on to the next step of the buttons yet, 
but we're going to work on the buttons on the one that's gray that I did before. It's all dry and ready to go. And then as usual, I will finish this off camera and I'll get pictures of everything and put the pictures in the comments and just on DIY dreaming. Hamilton, I'm glad you caught me live from Ohio. How's your weather there? It is beautiful in Atlanta today. Our weather is so crazy. It doesn't know for sure what season it is. Like it's, it's spring today. It might be summer tomorrow and then it might be winter over the weekend. It's just crazy. And things are starting to really bloom here, which means everybody who suffers from allergies is suffering from allergies. Okay, I'm almost there. So now I'm going to just use my paintbrush squeegee. And these um, paintbrush squeegees come a set of five, um, and they're great. They just make it easy to get into tight little spots. Okay, I think I mostly got it. I'll throw all my squeegees over here in this little tub, and then we'll I'll show you what it looks like. I do see one little spot here. I didn't quite get enough pink, so I can fix that with the spreader. Okay. So that is what that looks like. And... Oh, it's super cute. Oh my gosh, this is happy. Happy, happy, happy. It says hello spring, but it should say happy spring. Isn't that cute? Adorable. Adorable. So I'm going to set it right here. So I don't mess it up. And I'm just gonna press up my inks. And then we will proceed to this one over here. That I already worked on. Uh, this one. Hello Spring. Okay, so I wanna First, give you some ideas about how you can hang these. Um, what I have found is that they need to have something stiff at the top. Okay, so what I'm going to do um, is I'm either going to use one of these little dowels that you can get everywhere, including at Walmart, and they come in different sizes. Like some are thicker. Here's some really thick ones. I could use something like that if I wanted Or I had some of these things, which are great actually. I have absolutely no idea where they came from. They were just in my closet, like a lot of other crafting supplies. I'm like, where did I get that? I don't know. 
and I might use that as the base to uh, I do want to make sure that I have it pretty straight and the buttons and the embellishment are really what add a ton to the project so I'm going to pin this down you might have noticed that I have a little boo-boo I always have boo-boos it seems like but I do I have a little boo-boo right here so we'll just cover that with a button and it will be no problem at all. And I am using my Sherbonder low temperature um, cool shot mini low temperature hot glue gun. I'm not using the fancy dancy special fabric glue because you don't need it for this project. Um, you really don't. This is never going to get washed. And if you washed it, it's going to be ruined, so don't ever wash one of these. Um, just putting a little bit of teeny bit of glue on the banner and folding it down. It, you don't have to go overboard with a ton of glue because you're not going to hang anything heavy from it. What's gonna, let's see if one of these square things is going to work. And it's not going to show. It's just going to hold it straight to give it some ability to hang straight. Yes, that's going to work just fine. But like I said, you could use a dowel in any shape. You could also cut a paint stir stick. Uh, you could cut a little bit of the five gallon paint stir stick off and you could actually just glue that to the back if you wanted. Okay, and I'm gonna, um, this was a banner that I tore. So I'm gonna fiddle around with my strings just a little bit. And maybe you notice that down here I have a couple of long ones. I'm gonna clip those off. So they're not sticking out like what's going on with those everything sticks to my silicone mat okay and then what I am really liking with this color wave is to um, to use lace cream colored lace so I have two packages. This one looks like this. I hope I have enough left. I believe that I picked this up at the, um, oh, it would be super cute on an embroidery ring, Mary Lou. Yes. I had that thought too, and then I just didn't get to it. Um, anyways, but I think that would be adorable. So hopefully I have enough of this. I believe I picked this up at the Canadian Dollar Tree, which is called Dollarama. Yes, I do. Yay. Okay, and then I think we'll use this one that I just threw on the floor. It's basically the same color, but it's narrower. And this one came from Dollar Tree. So I'm going to put a narrow band of this at the top because there's not a lot of room. Our little stick out for right now. Let's scooch this down so you can see what I'm doing. And um, like I always say, you know, I'm doing this project pretty neutral uh, because those are the kind of colors 
things that most of the time appeal to me, but you could absolutely do this in any color or style that you want, really. doesn't have to be gray and this oatmeal color. A lot of times I also just use what I have. And um, so that's part of it. But I love creating something from really nothing. And this project is created out of some canvas duck and some dowels and some buttons and a stencil and it is going to be super cute it would look adorable just hanging um, on one of those command adhesives pretty much anywhere in your home like on a door or something i think it would be great okay so that is what we have there and then i I'm loving this wider lace. I would really like to be able to put it down here. And I think I will be able to. So let me trim this side up. And then we'll do the buttons. So what do you guys think so far? Let's see, my comments are stuck. As you're hopping on, tell me where you're watching from. Um, feel free to sprinkle, feel free to ask questions. Uh, don't hesitate to let me know if you would like a link. Um, or if you have ideas, I love it when people share ideas. I have learned actually so much about things that I'm, you know, not a super expert on from you guys. A lot of sewing stuff. Because I'm just one of those sewers that I just know enough to, you know, get the stuff done that I want to do, but not necessarily. I don't have all the vocabulary and everything right. getting pretty already. So let me just do the bottom of this lace. I'm just putting a teeny bit of glue on it. It doesn't need very much. And I want to show you some ribbon ideas for the brighter one too. So here we go, let's put our little piece of wood in here. Could be any size dowel or a paint stir stick. Okay, that's what that looks like so far. Okay, and then as far as the buttons go, I like to just randomly place them. So I'm going to grab a bunch of teeny ones. And I'm putting some of them like where there are flowers. Or little twirlies or start with this and it's just the teeniest little amount of hot glue 
Um, I do like when I'm doing something like this, I like for the little holes on my buttons to be winky wonky all over the place, not all straight, in other words, and I'll show you what I mean in just a second. find a different pretty one. So when I said winky wonky, just notice that the holes in the buttons, they're not going all horizontal or all vertical. They're just leaning all different ways. And let's keep gluing. Get some more of these little buttons. Thank you again to Joanne for sending these to me. Oh my gosh. Uh, this is like, buttons are just, it sounds silly, but oh my gosh, I just absolutely love buttons. Um, I love thinking about who wore something with these buttons. You know, who was the woman or man who had a piece of clothing and what was going on that um, they were so conscientious to clip the buttons off Uh, you know, and not waste them when the garment wasn't wearable anymore. I just love to think about all that stuff. So let me keep gluing. And then we'll do three little buttons off to either side. Okay, where did I stop? Right here, I think. And just be aware that you are gonna have glue strings everywhere. I mean, seriously. And um, I pulled as many of them as I could off of this piece right here. And then I just used my heat gun really close to it, turned up on the highest setting. You could use a hairdryer as well. And that seems to melt the glue strings and they sort of just disappear. So that's a way to handle all these aggravating glue strings that want to be everywhere. And you can see that I really haven't like planned too much and I think that's part of what makes um, this project pretty, I think, anyways. Isn't it pretty already? Oh my gosh, I just love these. Thank you everyone for the stars, it's so nice of you. So who has questions? Does anybody have questions about this? That stencil that I used, well either one of them, obviously they're reusable many, 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 many times. And um, they're easy to work with and easy to clean up. When you're working with ink, you want to just get them wet, get it wet, rinse it off as quick as you can. Uh, okay, and now I want a couple buttons that are maybe a little bit bigger. I do have a whole, um, 
case of other buttons, but we're using Joanne's buttons uh, today. Okay, and I'm going to put like a bigger one in the corner. In this corner. And then just to make it make sense, I'll put a couple of littler ones up in this corner. Right, and I am just going to use some rope. Well, it's not even rope. It's polished hemp. Let me just grab it. <laughs> it's a complete disaster. This is what it looks like. It's called polished hemp. This is what I use for every project where you're going to need some twine of some sort because it is polished and it makes it easier, much easier to get beads to string on it. Um, so this comes from Walmart. It's in the craft section. It's um, in the section where, um, where all the stuff to make uh, jewelry is. And I have used, I don't know, <laughs> at least six of those over the last few years. Okay, and I could come back and add some buttons outside of the center to cover up my little boo-boo, but honestly, I'm not thinking that it shows up that much. So I don't know. Okay, and then to do the hanger, I'm just going to put some like stripes of glue and lay my polished hemp into it. Not as long as I cut it. And dun dun dun, it needs to have the glue strings cleaned up. But, oh my gosh, that turned out so pretty. Um, so let me show you the one that we just got started and talk to you a little bit about ribbon ideas for that. But tell me in the comments, which one of these do you like better? Do you like the Hello Spring or the Bloom? And I know it's hard to see them, but I will get good pictures. I think they both turned out pretty, and I love this gray on the oatmeal with the um, mother of pearl buttons and the kind of creamy lace. I love that look. Okay, so for this one, obviously, we would do it differently, and I will finish it up off camera, but I was thinking for this, what would be fun would be to do a combination of bright colored ribbons like this. This ribbon right here came from Dollar Tree pretty recently. Let me pin it on just so you can get the idea. And I can hold it up. And then I would probably use some of this brighter. I have absolutely no idea where it came from. That might be too busy. I might just do another row of this same thing. Or just, 
I could just do some of this bro grain in the hot pink. So there's tons of options for what you can do. And then I'll do the exact same thing with the buttons. I'm just gluing on, them on in random places. I am in process of organizing my craft room. And you guys, I am working on getting the majority of my ribbon off of those big fat rolls and onto these little cards. Because you can store so much more ribbon in the same amount of space when they're on these cards than when they're on, you know, the big cardboard rolls like this. So, anyways, so this is the second one, which I will get finished up off camera. Um, and I'll get pictures of the pillows too, in case you joined late. But I just love everything <laughs> having to do with vintage buttons. This sits on my couch and it's not uncomfortable. Um, I haven't had problems with any of my buttons popping off. Of course, I have not washed it. Same with this one. It goes like this. Um, but I just love them. So, you like the buttons. Hello, spring with the buttons. Okay, you like this one the best. I think they're both adorable and I wish you could see them, like really see them up close because they are super cute and the elements to make this project, you know, a little bit of this polished hemp, my little piece of wood in here, this piece of fabric, a couple pieces of lace, a few buttons, uh, a couple of spreads of gray ink, one use of the stencil, I bet you that I have less than 50 cents into this. And it's, I think it's pretty special. I really love it. Same with this one. Yeah, so. Ooh, and I don't want to mess this one up. So let's set it back over here. <laughs> Janice says it's too hard to choose. Ruth um, says, love, love, hello, spring. I love that stencil too. And like I said, you don't have to use the whole entire thing. So after spring is over, you can still use this design all year long. And you could move your word hello down and just do hello in it. Or you could put an initial or lots of different things. So, yeah. All righty. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Yes, I'll put a... Um, Oh, a link for the cards. Okay, I don't have that anymore. She's asking me about this. But um, I ordered them on Etsy. And they're called, let me tell you what the size is, because there were different sizes. They're like cards for ribbon or something. And these are the four inch ones. So they're four inches long by about three and a quarter wide. And you can get them in different sizes. I bought 50 or something, all in this four inch size. Where did I find my top? I got this last week at Loft, and it was 40% off. So go check it out, they have some cute things. I bought a really cute peach colored top there at the same time, 40% off. Alrighty, thank you guys for joining me. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to sprinkle all that normal good stuff. Thank you so much to everybody who did the stars. Um, and I will see you guys tomorrow for, I don't know what we'll be doing, but I do have like 10 other things in process. So we'll figure out something to make sure that it's all completely different because I don't want you to think that I do the same thing day to day to day. Uh, so we'll do something completely different tomorrow. All right, see you guys later.